and welcome to another monthly update summary for Siebel CRM updates brought to you by the Siebel Hub, your number one resource for always up-to-date Siebel CRM training. The May 23 updates here, and after a dry spell of bug fix only releases, this one will not leave anyone unimpressed. In the Siebel CRM 23.5 update, Oracle is focused on two main areas, the inbound REST API for business objects, or data API for short, and Siebel Web Tools. The enhancements for the data API include administrative access control, dynamic integration objects, and the ability to allow or disallow anonymous requests. Siebel Web Tools 23.5 and higher supports some well-known application features, namely change records. Other areas of improvement include the SSSE, Siebel Server Sync for Exchange integration, which is no longer dependent on Microsoft Windows and Siebel Cloud Manager. The 23.5 installer also lays down a more recent version of Apache Tomcat 9.0.72. Let's dive right in and explore the Siebel CRM 23.5 update in a bit more detail. The ability to control REST access to Siebel business objects individually is a much welcome change. It's facilitated by a new view in the Administration Web Service screen. This view allows administrators to grant or deny access to each individual business object by simply checking or unchecking the Grant Access flag. With 23.5 or higher, any business object one wants to access via the inbound REST API must be listed in this view and have the grant access flag checked. The post installed database update utility ensures that all business objects which have a base integration object are migrated into the respective database table, so any existing integrations continue to operate. Besides the grant access flag, the new view also allows administrators to map a business object to any, yes, any integration object. The era of base integration objects is coming to an end. Can it get any better? What if we could get rid of the need to create and maintain integration objects for restful business data access altogether? With 23.5, this becomes reality as you can simply register any business object and leave the integration object field blank. The groundbreaking change is enabled by the new Dynamic Integration Objects feature. The Dynamic Integration Object feature is enabled by default by means of a new component parameter named Enable Dynamic I.O. in REST. In a nutshell, EAI Object Manager will either fall back on a base integration object, if it exists for the given business object, or generate one on the fly. These ad hoc integration object definitions are stored as XSD files on the Siebel server. Make sure to watch our special update video for more details on all REST API changes in Siebel 23.5 and higher. Siebel Hub Silver and Gold members get early access. Check out the links in the description below. After applying 23.5 or later, administrators will find a new flag in the application interface profile, REST Inbound Authentication section. This flag controls anonymous access to the Siebel Inbound REST API. Instead of using the ever so weird trick of entering false information in either the anonymous user's name or password fields, administrators can now check or uncheck a flag to allow or disallow anonymous inbound REST requests. All right, that was quite a handful of features. Need a REST? No? Good. Let's head over to the Siebel Web Tools then and check out the latest compatibility updates. Selecting multiple records in a list applet and changing up to four fields simultaneously is probably one of the oldest Siebel CRM features and rightfully included in any Siebel CRM application except Siebel Web Tools. But that's about to change with 23.5 and higher. Web Tools is now standing proud, allowing developers to bulk edit records without having to sneak out to Siebel Tools. If your organization is using the infamous Siebel Server Synchronization for Exchange, now Office 365, make sure to check out the respective information in Siebel Bookshelf. With 23.5 and higher, the dependency on Microsoft Windows Server to run the SSSE specific components has been removed. 
allowing organizations with a preference for Linux or Unix to use their preferred operating system for SSSE. The 23.5 release of Siebel Cloud Manager, SCM, also includes some interesting updates as documented in the respective bookshelf guide. These include utilization of OCI Vault to store sensitive credentials, updates to basic authentication for requests to the SCM REST API, parameter changes for SCM payload, and improved description of third-party products used in the SCM architecture. And there you have it, another monthly Siebel CRM update summary brought to you by the Siebel Hub. Siebel 23 is off to a great start, and so is the Siebel Hub learning experience. Check out the updated Siebel Hub curriculum, including the Siebel 23 Plus workshop, which provides Siebel practitioners with all the information they need to work with the latest Siebel CRM updates. Go to SiebelHub.com and start learning today. Hi, it's Alex from the Siebel Hub, and today we are going to answer the old question, is it an upgrade? or an update. So let's see. As of Siebel 23 and higher, you have upgrade or update pass depending on the version you're currently on. So if you have 7.5, 7.7, that's really old. That's 20 years and older. So you're in for a two-step upgrade according to the upgrade guide in Bookshelf. If you are slightly higher, 7.8 to 8.2, you still have to do a one-step full upgrade. And for both, you're still on high interactivity, on Internet Explorer, unbelievable. Yes, you have to go to OpenUI as well. The two-step upgrade takes you to 8.1.1, and if you have that, or any other version up to IP16, you're in for what's known as an incremental repository merge, or IRM. So all of these are upgrades. And that means to go from these versions to the latest 20.3, this is a month long project measured in person months or person years. And we're not here to cover all of it. You need to get professional help from consulting and Oracle to get your upgrade project on the way and get to the latest Siebel CRM. So if you already are on IP17 or anything higher than that, including 18, 19, 20, you name it, then we talk about updates. And an update is measured in person days. So it's just a matter of a few days to get your environment from that older version to the latest 23.x or higher. So let's dive a little bit into the update paths that we have. So there are a few mandatory steps you have to take. You have to make sure you back up your environment database, then you run what's known as the modular deployment engine or MDE, which does all the binary stuff really. And then you run the post install database update. This is mandatory and it updates your database. That's why I take a backup with schema C data and manifest data that brings in, well, the mandatory stuff that Oracle has developed since your last version. Now, there are a few optional steps as well, depending on your implementation, such as running the repository upgrade that you decide upon information from Oracle in the release notes or bookshelf. And it runs only on the development environment and brings new, well, repository stuff into your repository, along with schema C data and manifest. If you have to follow some configuration instructions from Oracle, you also do that in the DR environment. In any environment, there could be any known issues that you need to fix. And administrative changes might also be on your menu. So let's look at the development update in greater detail. You start with backing up your environment and database. Make sure you have a safe point to go back to. You shut down the software on that machine, Siebel Server, Gateway, or AI. And then you run the MDE, typically on the first 
Siebel server because that's where the post install database update runs as well. It has to be run once per database. And if that doesn't complete successfully, you have to rinse and repeat until that's successful. Then you run the MDE to update any other Siebel software, any other Siebel servers, gateways, AIs, and don't forget Siebel tools or developer web client or mobile web client. Then it's time to start up that development enterprise so you can decide if you have a repository upgrade. Now let's do the fast track. Let's say, no, we don't need a repository upgrade. We have no configuration instructions, no administrative changes. That will mean we're done with the development update. But there might be just a longer path. So when you have decided to run the repository upgrade, you of course have to run it and successfully so. If there are any config instructions, that's developer work in Web Tools 2, and that has to be tested and delivered. Now, administrative changes depend on what version you are, what features you're using. So let's say you have some, and then you of course have to implement them. And now we're done. Now let's take a look at test or production or RR environments. We start with a backup shut down the software, run the modular deployment engine in update mode on the first Siebel server to get that post install database update out of the way. And then we update any other instances of Siebel CRM that you have in that environment. Start up the environment. If there have been no repo repository changes and no administrative changes to do, we are done. Now, the longer path is, of course, if you had repository changes, you need to go and fire up that migration application to migrate the repository. And don't forget the C data changes from the development to the RR environment. Make sure you test that thoroughly. And if you have any administrative changes, depending on your implementation, you have to implement those. And then we're done with the update of a test or production environment.